Hello and welcome to the CW3 Weekly. We are so excited about today's guest, uh, especially if you attended the CW3 and you were there for uh, my wellness panel. You will undeniably not forget Dr. Sally Diane, who is a psychotherapist here in La Quinta, California, also a licensed marriage and family therapist. Um, but, you know, working in private practice is her first love and her focus is totally client-centered. Um, she has a strong dedication to helping people. She's worked with a lot of people with trauma and um, I know that's a big focus of hers. So because of everything that is going on with, um, you know, the shutdown and COVID-19 and, and all of these different things that everybody is experiencing, I thought that Dr. Sally Diane would be able to lend some really good, helpful information today for all of us. So welcome to the program, Dr. Sally. Thank you, and it's nice to be here, and I hope everybody is staying safe. Yes, I think that everybody, you know, is definitely taking as many precautions as they possibly can. Um, you know, this is such a, interesting time that none of us have ever experienced and we are experiencing this simultaneously together and i would imagine that in your practice you've been able to not you haven't been able to see anybody maybe through video call um, but you've definitely um, had you know talked to a lot of people and i'm sure that maybe their concerns are much different now um, first, before we even go there, how are you doing? <laughs> oh, sweet of you to ask. Thank you. I, um, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Um, yeah, I, I feel good. I'm taking care of myself. Um, that, is that what you mean by how am I doing? Yeah, I just want to, you know, check in with you and see how you're feeling, how you're doing, how you're handling all of this. Being able to connect with clients. A lens my life normalcy that a lot of people don't have right now. So I actually feel quite contented in my own personal life. That's that's great. So we're going to need some tips and tools on how you're being able to do that and staying so calm during this storm that we're that we're in. And so having said that, um, I know that you're taking care of yourself and you really focus on self-care and, and nurturing, um, you know, what is it that you might say to someone who is seeking a therapist at this time because of everything that's going on? Seeking a therapist for the first time, I tell people it's our, it's our first interview. You're interviewing me. Is it a good fit? Does it feel like there's a, a possibility for a rapport and a connection? Because that rapport and connect and connection is what allows the safety and the exploration to happen. So that's number one. There and there at this time, I don't know if in 2020 we still have stigma around people turning to therapy as a form of support and a place to get some unbiased and objective feedback that maybe concerns about family feedback wouldn't permit. So and just to you need to feel safe, trust your gut, and any therapist would respect that it is a first job interview. Mm -hmm. And so you haven't been able to see any of your clients, and mm -hmm. gosh, we're going on almost three months now. Uh, so, you know, I know that you're doing a lot of phone um, sessions with people, but what is it that you miss the most about not seeing your clients in person? Honestly, I miss hugging. I miss yeah, you're a hugger. Hugging. I am a hugger and I know healing touch. And um, honestly, be, because of that, here you share your life story, you share your, your life experiences. And at the end, I just want to, it's like, I love you, baby. I accept you. We're good. You know, for that sense of validation through physical touch. I really miss that. And honestly, I don't know when we're going to get to have that again. Yeah, it could it could definitely be could definitely be um, a while. Mm -hmm. um, also, it you know, body you language. Are seeking that therapist, and you find someone, or maybe someone's really in a desperate place right now where they really do and want to find somebody. Yeah. Um, maybe they're going by a referral of a friend. You know, what is it that you can tell our 
viewers some suggestions, some tips that maybe this is someone who cannot find a therapist or maybe doesn't have the funds right now or they've had to let their insurance lapse or whatever the case may be. Um, what would you suggest to people that they can do even on their own to stay calm and you know the anxiety I mean is I know ridiculously off the charts right now. We need to stay in our day in all honesty, most anxiety comes from the what ifs about tomorrow. And while I know we have to deal with tomorrow, we've got to stay centered and grounded in our day, first and foremost. Also, honestly, most adults can look back and there have been challenges and struggles. Don't forget how you have met those challenges and struggles. Don't forget your own inner resources and they are available and in fact that's what therapy is all about is helping you uncover your own inner resources and strengths so that's something you can do with yourself that requires you being able to lean into your feelings and i encourage journaling i encourage video recording yourself i encourage painting or talking with someone or doing anything that allows you dancing anything allows self-expression validate your own feelings it's just bits of information they're not facts so we got to own where we're afraid so we know where to do the reassurance the honest real reassurance when you're saying staying in the day mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to be presumptuous. Does that mean living right now in the moment? Um, in the moment, especially when high anxiety. A tip for somebody who's really having a panic attack, <clears throat> this is not silly, it is effective, is to remind yourself, like let's say you're having a panic attack or your anxiety's rising, to remind yourself, I'm sitting in this chair, my feet are on the floor. I can feel the tile under my feet. I feel safe in this moment. Nobody's hurting me. I'm, calm. I, I'm aware of my surroundings. And it, just to name the things, I love my dog is here. I love this, I love that. To name those things, that actually helps. It doesn't say you don't have a right to feel that. It just reminds you right now in this moment, you're safe. But beyond that, just the anxiety of every day with what we're going through, I encourage um, that we keep a schedule. Mm. Keep a schedule. It's your schedule. And to include in that schedule, this is a unique time. Most of us have this wonderful opportunity for slowing our lives down in a way we have not experienced ever. And quite frankly, and this is an interesting phenomenon, people who've experienced a great deal of depression throughout my practice over the years feel better during this time because people are slowing way down. It honestly seems to be one of the symptoms of depression is trying to match a lifestyle speed that isn't conducive to your own nature. So while this is hard on some people, uh, other people are actually learning their own inner rhythm. Does that make sense? Yeah, and that's really helpful and valuable information. Uh, I know even for me personally, I'm a go, 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 a doer, always have something going on. So this slowdown, it's, it, it's actually a shock. It's shocking. And then when you've had to slow down for this long, I know that people go, well, now what? Now what do I do? So I think what you're saying about making a schedule can be really helpful to people to keeping them on track. I know that I've been able to keep somewhat of a schedule where I'm offering my yoga classes four days a week. I'm showing up for somebody else in need who is also looking to decrease their their stress level and their anxiety. So I, I love that the, the schedule because it's holding you accountable to something. 
Um, but at the same time, you know, it's letting go of that have to do, do, do all the time. I feel like I've found more things to do <laughs> by being home so much than ever before. It's your nature to be very motivated and extremely busy. And I agree with you. This has been also an opportunity for you to slow down and reconnect with yourself. And <clears throat> I think for people who are highly productive, who are, who are, let's face it, you're a mover and a shaker woman. <clears throat> people like you, I think this is a blessed time. It's like, it's like God doing for you what you cannot do for yourself. And I think that speaks to a majority of the population. Mm -hmm. So I know our viewers will definitely be able to connect with that because we're all doers. And yes, the slowdown. Um, yeah, it's just definitely been interesting. What have you seen, Dr. Sally, as a common theme in this crisis with your clients? With all, you know, I know there's confidentiality, but what is the common theme that you're seeing that people are experiencing? Initially, it was a great deal of uncertainty and fear. Uncertainty breeds anxiety and fear. And there was a lot of that for a variety of reasons. The common theme I'm seeing is that because of this circumstance and then the individual lives within their own circumstance, there is this reconnecting or getting to know oneself in such a different way. There's this major disruption, and then it's like the pieces are landing in a different way in one's life. And the common thing to me is this disruption is leading to, oh, expansion, like more of oneself is emerging all across the landscape. Does that sound too abstract? <laughs> Well, maybe you can share a little bit. What do you, what, go a little bit deeper if you can. Okay. Okay. People are commenting on, I don't have my own familiar outlets. And guess what? They were more disruption, not disruptions. They were more distractions. There's less distractions. So those things that we used to go to, to avoid self mm. are there. And all of a sudden, people are meeting self. And I'm hearing things such as, I feel um, nervous about the way I am with my kids. I didn't know I felt discomfort when I X, Y, or Z. Or, gee, my spouse and I, all this time together, these little things are emerging not in my spouse, but in my reaction to my spouse. New stuff, new stuff coming up. And it's initially being met with discomfort and then being met with curiosity, which is a wonderful place to be when disruption happens in your life. That's actually a great tool, being curious about the disruption instead of fearful of it. Yes, now that does definitely make greater sense. and having to look at self um for a lot of people that's not very much fun <laughs> right so unless they're actually seeking to talk to someone like yourself because they're trying to learn more about themselves and and go greater within so people who are uh, having to seek more of self is that bringing on a sense of calmness or is that then leading into more anxiety because they're having to face something that they're typically not facing? Anxiety usually is our first experience with change. So of course there's some anxiety that comes up and at least the process of therapy or with a really good friend that you you trust immensely and you know has your back is that process of okay that curious of what does this disruption mean and my reaction to it and I I'm surprised at myself for my reaction I feel judgmental I feel shame I feel fear I feel all of these variety of feelings I feel happy giddy uncertain all of these new emerging feelings I think are our own personal journey 
of what this pandemic represents for all of us, okay? I guess what I'm saying is we have got to meet ourselves with self-acceptance no matter where we stand. Mm -hmm. Number one cause of depression is disowning oneself. And this is honestly an opportunity for all of us to cultivate a deeper relationship, friendship with ourselves. And hopefully we have people in our lives who mirror those positive things about ourselves that we forget that is helpful to be reminded about. Yeah, that's really profound, disowning oneself. Wow, that's a big one. At least it, I, you know, I, that just kind of hits me a little bit. So yeah, disowning oneself, I think a lot, that's what I'm saying. A lot of people don't want to look at self. So when you're saying, you know, those outlets aren't there for people, it's not getting together with friends and putting something on the back burner or just never even dealing with it at all, or, um, you know, maybe not spending as much time with their kids and because they were having those other distractions and now they are forced to be with their spouse more, with their children more. Um, so yeah, I definitely think that so many of us have learned so much from this. What is the one thing that you've been able to learn from all of this, Dr. Sally? That's a good question. I, that I too, you know, like I've been saying to my husband periodically, my mind is constantly racing and my body has nowhere to go. Mm. So I'm like, okay, this is more channeling for me into writing because that's my creative outlet. So it, it's, it's allowing me to enjoy something I enjoy that it's been hard for me to give myself permission to enjoy. Mm. Okay, I, I really have learned that it's okay to take pleasure in things, to, I don't have to schedule a swim. I can just go swimming. I don't have to schedule a writing session. I just get to write. I don't have to schedule all my time. I like a schedule, but I have a freedom that has been, that's new for me. Does that make sense? Yeah, I love that. I love that. So yeah, I, I think, so I actually, I love that because learning from you what you've learned from it. If we look at ourselves, what have I learned from this? And we ask ourselves that question, maybe that is a way that we can, we can better channel what we need to do for ourselves. This is something we're all living through together, yet in such isolation. The juxtaposition, I think, is interesting. It's like a cultivation of here so that we, we're all going to be different when we emerge back out there. Mm -hmm. And I think there'll be a lot of positive differences. I think so too. And, and I've seen a lot of people who really have been able to step up for other people. And, you know, I've seen a lot of people want to support other people during all of this because they may have not had support uh, in other ways. So I, you know, I've always been looking at this as an optimist and thinking this is the best time to get in your greatest shape, eat really healthy, take care of yourself, be kind to yourself. I love that you're promoting that because that ties in to the relation. Our body and depression or our body and our moods are so intertwined, right? Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, I can't say that, you know, I don't have my waves of okay, I'm going down the rabbit hole for a little while and then I got to come back up and pull myself out. And, uh, but, you know, I, I am human and I think a lot of us probably experience that, but I'd have to say that I'm more so positive um, and optimistic than, than the other end of the spectrum. So this has been so helpful, um, not only for, for me, but I know our viewers are going to just love what you've been able to to share today, Dr. Sally, if there are any other nuggets that you can share with us, please do right now. This is like our last opportunity to, to hear, at least for now, from please you. Um, express. Yeah, what, what else can you, what are the last bit of nuggets you can give us? Allow yourself to express, right? Allow yourself to daydream. What time are we ever this going to be this slow down where we can really daydream and fantasize about the kind of life we 
want to keep growing into. Allow yourself to play. Carl Jung talked about with through his creative play, which just evolved, he his actual his greatest works emerged. He learned more about his psyche and therefore how to open up the psyche of others through creative play and through creative self-expression. Now is the time to do that and to give yourself permission to do that. Don't run away from your feelings. Be curious about them. Let them be a part of learning about you. They're information. They're not facts. That's great. Great. Thank you so much again, Dr. Sally, for, for joining us today. We're very, very grateful for all of your insights and wisdom. And we hope that we can talk to you again. And we wish you all well with your family and your health. And have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you. Take good care of yourself. It's wonderful to see you if only on Zoom. I know. Have a great Have day. Have out there. Yeah. Bye. Bye-bye.